in this House, I'll get a chance to talk about this. This is the economic Honourable vandalism David, of the sorry, worst the order. Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I re respond firstly to a couple of points the last speaker made? He accused uh, uh, Labour Party politicians of not having the fortitude to go to Taranaki. Andrew Little is there tonight uh, he, uh, at a public meeting. He accused the Prime Minister of on some, being of some flight of fancy into the United Kingdom uh, and then Europe in her forthcoming trip. The focus of that trip is to try and unlock the start of trade negotiations with both the United Kingdom and the European Union. The European Union negotiation has not even started. The prior government could not get it across the start line. The Prime Minister, whilst meeting with the President of uh, France, Mr Macron, and with Angela Merkel, is trying to advance New Zealand's trade interests and start those processes. It is not some um, uh, fluffy trip as the, uh, for photo opportunities, as the last member would say. Um, Mr uh, Speaker, the other point that um, the uh, National Party members seem to forget is that their own leader says that New Zealand needs to start a transition away from burning fossil fuels and producing fossil fuels. He said it in, a, um, in an interview on The Nation, which was his first interview post-election uh, to the position of leader of the National Party. He said, we must start a transition. And the first time he gets an opportunity to uh, stand up in, as leader of the National Party and actually implement that by starting a transition, he fails. He says we ought not to start a transition. He says we ought to just put our head down and continue the way we uh, have been going for years. Sir, this is a transition that will take many decades. As other speakers have already said, there are many uh, thousands of kilometres, indeed 100,000 square kilometres of offshore prospects already licensed for prospecting in New Zealand. None of them stop. Well, I've heard comments to the contrary from uh, members of the opposition, so I want to read today from one of the notifications to the New Zealand Stock Exchange from one of New Zealand's major oil and gas producers since, uh, or, or, and explorers since um, the announcement was made by the government this morning. And I quote, this is from New Zealand Oil and Gas. The government's announcement will not have any immediate impact on the operations or financial position of the company. Potentially transformational New Zealand oil and gas exploration prospects in the Canterbury and Great South Basins are unaffected by today's announcement and the company is continuing to market these world-class prospects. Hard to reconcile that with the rhetoric that we've heard from the National Party this afternoon. Mr Speaker, time and again in my experience in this House, and I've been here for 16 years, I've heard these irreconcilable statements from the National Party about how we need to do things environmentally, but we mustn't do this. I've got before me a, a, a video clip that was self-titled by the Honourable Jerry Brownlee as then opposition spokesperson for energy when I was the Minister of Energy. And he put up this video, which to his eternal shame, lasts on YouTube. Anyone, you just need to, you just need to Google sexy Cole Brownlee and you will find it. This is what he put up. He put this uh, chapter one. This was the first of his video blogs. And it said chapter one, sexy Cole. That was what he labelled. Now, at that time, the last Labour government, uh, and I was Minister of Energy at the time, we wanted to do something about cleaning up our electricity sector. Renewable electricity had dropped to 64% of generation and was going down, and we wanted it to go up. So we had a large number of measures. We invested in the grid. We priced carbon. We told the SOEs to invest in renewables. Uh, we we uh, eased consenting for renewables, and we set New Zealand on the path for 90% renewables by 2025. Indeed, we're actually now up 84% in, in a recent quarter. Well, actually, that's an interesting question. So what did the, the uh, National say? Well, they said it was impossible, and they said the government would, the country would face an energy gap that they showed on that graph there. And the energy gap was going to be filled with what? 
Ah, it was going to be called, it was going to be, according to Jerry Brownlee, filled with coal. He thought we would need coal. He said the lights would go out if we didn't produce coal. He said, in fact, he promised that they would do away with the 90% renewables by 2025 target, and he got into power and he started to do that. And then he told New Zealanders, oh look, in order to achieve that, we're going to need to mine a bit of coal in the national parks. And tens of thousands of New Zealanders marched against him in the streets. And what happened? Mr Brownlee was removed from the portfolio of energy and it was given to Hekia Parata and Hekia Parata had the good sense to keep the 90% target and keep the settings that the prior Labor Party had set and now we're just about at 90% and, renewables. And I'm going, to, I'm going to ask the member now to, uh, to actually get back to the current decision. And now uh, we're at 90% renewables without having to use thermal fuels. Now, the next fuel, they say, is necessary for our to us to meet our renewable and our energy targets is gas. They're just wrong. Yes, in the next decade or two, we will need some gas. Some of it will go to industrial heat. Decreasing quantities of it will, it will go to electricity. Some of it will be used for the production of methanol. But we are in a transition away from fossil fuels to renewables. This, this, um, the, you know, if you want to follow the rest of it, there was some great pillaring of, um, of Jerry Brownlee by Lucy Lawless and others. Um, they, 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 that's the other video you'll turn up. But it shows that if you actually show some vision, if you create some investment certainty for those that are investing their private capital in New Zealand, they will follow the money, they will follow the signal, and you will get alignment of economic outcome with environmental outcome as we already have in electricity. Now the new government is plotting the course to go from 90% renewable electricity to 100%, and we don't need gas to do it. And indeed, if you were using gas, you wouldn't get there. Mr um, Speaker, the next thing I would point, they say Fonterra. Fonterra needs gas as a bridging fuel to go from coal for milk dehydration in the South Island uh, to, uh, to renewables eventually. Well, maybe they do. Maybe they'll get that out of that New Zealand oil and gas prospect. I suspect history will show they won't need that. I think that they will go direct from coal to renewables. In fact, I've had one of the, ma the CEOs of the largest generators in New Zealand saying they think that's the way it's going to go because the cost of wind power is coming down and they don't think we'll need gas to get Fonterra off coal, they think they'll go direct to renewables. Mr Speaker, this is how a transition works. Lastly, in the time I've got available, I want to talk about how important it is that you invest in the right things for the future, not the wrong things for the future. If you invest in the wrong things for the future, you waste your capital because you create a stranded asset risk. If you overinvest in gas and coal and the fix or in oil, in the next few years in New Zealand, you risk wasting that money before the end of the economic life of those assets. The Japanese are down here already experimenting on the production, or about to experiment on the production of hydrogen to produce hydrogen or the transportable fuel of form of hydrogen, which is ammonia, in order to export fuel from renewable sources. Why? Why are they coming to New Zealand? because they think that New Zealand may be the lowest cost source in the world of clean, transportable energy sources from renewable sources. They're not coming for our gas or our coal. They're coming because we think, they think we've got a renewables future. It is very possible that New one of New Zealand's points of comparative advantage in the world in the future is to use our renewables to produce alternative fuels like hydrogen, which we could export. Did you hear a word of that from the National Party? No, no those Luddites have got their head down the coal mine still, and they think, well, if they'll pull it out of that, they'll put it down a gas, gas hole. Mr Speaker, we are in a transition to a clean future. It will be a just transaction. The lights will not go out. The last thing, I won't be lectured by Mr Goldsmith about economic prospects when he was in government, he dropped exports from 30% of the economy to 27% of the economy against a promise to increase them to 40%. That's failure. We need new points of comparative advantage in the world to grow new exports of goods and services. 
Stat Oil's pulling out of New Zealand. BP's already gone. Shell's on the way. They know that the future is not fossil fuels. The time for this debate has expired. I call on Government Order of the Day number one. Government Notice of Motion number one on the appointment of the Controller and Auditor General.